I've never seen Dr. Montana back down from advocating for measures that help protect the health of the populations he serves, no matter how controversial the measures may be. He's also an outstandingly supportive, approachable, and inspiring mentor who helps spur the passion I have to pursue a career in health and policy research. Julio Montana was born in Buenos Aires and gained a keen interest in the sciences from his parents. My father and my mother are uh, both in science. Uh, my father a physician and my mother a botanicist. Uh, so I really uh, grew up in an environment where uh, science was talked about uh, quite a lot. As part of uh, my training, I eventually uh, felt that I uh, wanted to pursue uh, postdoctoral training. I first met him in Argentina uh, in about 1980, I would think. Uh, he was a very young man and I was giving a lecture down there and he spoke to me and, and about coming up to Canada. One thing led to the other and a year later uh, I, um, I was a postdoctoral fellow uh, at St. Paul's Hospital uh, under Dr. Jim Hogg. He became a resident in our program to learn internal medicine and get his Canadian license. And during that period, the AIDS epidemic hit. And uh, we're a hospital of about 500 beds. Uh, we're in downtown Vancouver, which is the San Francisco of the North. So the AIDS epidemic hit us really very hard. And so because my hospital was immersed uh, in the midst of the epidemic, uh, and me doing my respiratory training, uh, I was um, called to look after individuals who were affected with AIDS-related pneumonias. And there was a period of time when we had 40 patients in this hospital with AIDS, most of whom died. Uh, shortly after the AIDS epidemic came out, Julio was instrumental in, in identifying one of the important complications of AIDS, a particular kind of pneumonia, and he um, showed that um, a certain treatments for this kind of pneumonia could significantly improve the outcome for patients. He came up with this idea that the virus is way too complex for us to hit it with one medication. So this idea about multiple drugs used simultaneously at the same time became the gold standard. We were able then to uh, bring the treatment to people in need in such a way that very quickly mortality decreased markedly and life expectancy started to uh, increase rather sharply. I think Julio's greatest achievement was the hypothesis of treatment as prevention. That if you put everyone on antiretroviral drugs who is infected and you reduce the viral load in the body to undetectable levels, then if they have unprotected sex, they will not transmit the virus. He was the first one to really champion highly uh, active antiretroviral therapy. Now, uh, this turned AIDS from a disease which was fatal in a fairly short period of time to a disease which is now a chronic disease like diabetes or hypertension or anything else. And over the course of uh, 25 or 27 years, I've forgotten just how long, uh, we went from that, that 40 bed unit in which everybody died till just a year or so ago, uh, we closed the AIDS ward. And uh, not just in British Columbia, not just in Canada, but again, uh, one of the key things about Julio's career is that he, he doesn't just stay at home, he goes all around the world to try to work tirelessly to advance this agenda. Because Julio was dealing with the pandemic of HIV and AIDS, the bulk of which is felt outside of Canada, outside of North America, there are 35 million people living with the virus, 25 million of them in Africa, so it gives you a sense of where Julio's theories are put into practice. He is uh, saving lives and having a monumental impact around the world. And he's basically changed AIDS from an acute, rapidly fatal illness to a chronic disease which is being exceptionally well managed. And thanks to Julio, I think we're well on our way to eradicating this illness. His theories have proved entirely valid given the imprimatur of legitimacy by the World Health Organization and governments around the world. This one man has provided the answer to the pandemic of AIDS. So this is good for HIV and AIDS, but if we now extrapolate from that, uh, uh, we can then begin to realize that we have an opportunity to use the same strategy for other contagious illnesses, uh, namely tuberculosis, hepatitis, uh, infections B or C, uh, uh, other sexually transmitted diseases. One of the characteristics of the most successful people in the world is that they don't give up when somebody throws a roadblock in their face or tells them they can't get there from here. And his persistence is, is absolutely remarkable. And you know, he has been up against some very tough opposition in, uh, in, in his province, in his country, 
and in other parts of the world. And it's his persistence which has allowed him to triumph overall. I would propose that treatment as prevention, uh, if applied smartly, can lead to virtual disease elimination, uh, targeted disease elimination that is, uh, and in doing so uh, can contribute to healthcare sustainability. So truly I believe that uh, the lessons we have learned in our campaign against HIV and AIDS can be uh, critical for the control of this particular disease but they also offer significant lessons on how we can optimize, maximize and improve our healthcare system. And then through his work with both the UN and the World Health Organization, uh, the, the things that he set in place in Vancouver are now having a worldwide impact. Many, many countries are following his lead and it's now become part of the so-called gold standard. There are very few who can say they change the world every day and Julio changes the world every day. An extraordinary humanitarian leader in global health, highly acclaimed clinician scientist, and HIV novel treatment innovator, Canadian Medical Hall of Fame laureate, Dr. Julio Montaner.